I'm at the part now in the uh, build of the Gothic Gaunt where I'm going to take a look at the fingers. Uh, first of all, I'm going to take a look at a technique I use to make these little knuckle gadlings. Um, it's really straightforward. Uh, the material I'm using in this case is very thin. It's 20 gauge, um, so it's about 0.8 of a mil. If you look at a lot of originals, um, they are exceptionally thin, so much so they've broken through often on the top of the gadling there where the material's been worked very thin. So beware, if you're making stuff for modern day sports and all this sort of business, you'll need thicker materials or stronger materials than I'm using. Uh, you just have to be careful with what you're doing and build what's appropriate for its end game. The technique can kind of work still in this instance, um, but like I say, just be aware of what the end game of the gauntlet is uh, going to be used for and make what's appropriate for it. The process then in uh, summary is firstly start with a little pattern. In this case it's 26 mil uh, wide uh, just because it felt good. No other reason. I took a look at the picture uh, and tried to figure out what that would mean across the back of the finger. Uh, they're very often wider across the finger there we go, than we expect. They're not these thin strips. Sometimes they are but very rarely. They tend to be a bit wider across the finger. Uh, than we often give them credit for. Um, so uh, make sure you've got that sorted and sometimes the knuckle gadling goes either side of the finger. So I've got my pattern and I like to mark a centre point because um, I can work it out on the card nice and easily. Next up, cut your sheet, quite straightforward. Dish the sheet, raise the point, that easy, or stick in the point there. That's straightforward. Um, so we'll take a look at the process. So a quick look at the tools that I've made. Now you can do this with a block of lead, all that sort of stuff. In fact, when I started, that's exactly what I used. Uh, you just smash the steel into it a few times and the lead will take the form of what you need. But when you're doing lots of these, I found this was a better solution. Uh, I came up for, with myself. I've got this, about an inch and a half hemisphere uh, that I bought from um, Brundles. Uh, they're a UK metal stockist, but you can get them sort of anywhere. They use usually in their gates and uh, railings uh, part of the catalogue. And all I've done is really abysmally welded it to this bit of stock. It's not even square, but there we go. Turn it that way, it's a bit less embarrassing. So, anyway, I did that, and then what you do is you take your flat piece, you put it in there, and you knock it about till it looks like that. As luck would have it, and it genuinely was, I found a ball peen that fits it precisely. So I drop on my ears, then deafen myself, and it's as straightforward as this. Just pop the bit of work on there, and strike the hammer with a rawhide, just get it down into the piece, work it around, and et voila, you got another one of those. Now I'll show you how I put the peak in the top and gentle off and ease off the shape of them because that's a bit abrupt for a knuckle, fits lovely when it's bent but they're not like that. They tend to be, the one I'm actually copying is almost flat, uh, but I didn't like that, so I've put a bit of curvature in it. But anyway, on with the process and I'll show you the next part. On to the next part then. Quite straightforward. In this instance, all I do is I put, I've done one before, so there's a little dent in the lead. You drop that in the lead. What I've done here is I've got a fairly hefty ball pin, which I've taken a little stake point here. Now it's blunt, doesn't hurt. You put it in your hand, don't want to go into a point because it'll just blow straight through the material. And just as before, you take that, line up on the dot that I drew earlier, that's why I had that hole in the um, pattern. Line up there, give it a few whacks. Check it's in the centre. Now, I can hear a lot of folk with the magic of the internet going, ah, but that's going to weaken that point. 
and indeed it will and go take a look at the originals it's a bit off center that one but we can make it work just for the purposes of the video um, it does weaken it undoubtedly um, but go look at the originals and you will see uh, very often that hole is blown through not always but sometimes it's gone through it leads me to believe they would have probably used this technique correct power there it is so I'll bring that this way a little bit there we go that's a bit better now if I keep going I will blow through that and that's not the intention of this but like I say take a look at some of the original stuff if it's not good enough for your sport or for your particular hobbies regulations or whatever then don't do it it's quite straightforward um, but in this case it's a historical piece or a historical piece um, that isn't going to be worn in anger so I'm quite happy to use the material thicknesses uh, that they would have done. Um, but like I say, if it's not right, don't use it. If you need high carbon, use carbon. You just need to warm that up first, uh, in all likelihood, unless it's a pre annealed piece, in which case you might get away with it. But anyway, let's push on and I'll show you the uh, next part of the setup, and then that bit is just about done. Using the same stake as earlier, get it in a vise and get yourself a rounded hammer, flute and hammer, some description, something gentle along that edge and just make your way along gently, take that off you can see better, uh, gently around the outside of it If this is too shallow, just give the piece a little lift. So you're working that metal work back down and just don't work the end of it. And then, if it was a bit out like it was on this one, just work down into here a touch. Get yourself a flatter hammer for that bit. Whatever works. Let's get a look at it. There we go, the point is starting to form. Just about there now. And then all I do is ease off this curve by hitting it a few times uh, with a hammer. I normally do that before I put the point in, so it would be an adventure to see whether that works or not. But we'll let future me worry about that in a couple of moments. So here's our plate, and I want to ease off this curvature across here. If you look at the original, uh, which I'll try and put the picture up, you can see that it's practically flat uh, as it lays across the finger like that. Um, I don't want to follow that exactly. I want to put a bit of curvature on them because I like gloves and gauntlets to be made. Uh, so they're ready to clench onto something, but equally you should be able to flex and open the hand. So I just want to ease this off a bit. So what I'll do is get it on any old cur curved surface like this and just tap it down. And same again on this side. Now, I have on this particular one messed up my center point. You can see it's riding more towards this end than this end. And the reason I'm not too bothered about it is A, you see it all over original stuff. They weren't that accurate with it. But B, um, I'll just shorten it and I'll use it on the little finger. And then get it onto this bit here and just tap that down. Until you're satisfied. Same again this side. It 
it does this sort of funky scallop bit here but we'll grind that all away and that's kind of it really just tidy it up as much as you want to try to keep some of the curvature in on the end on here if you look at the one or two originals that we have left uh, to us because they seem to be very rare finds these you'll spot that they're kind of flat and then the end goes around nicely so that when it's curved it doesn't lift off of the associated plate but there is a quick video on how I go about making this type of knuckle gaddling.